Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about playing the hi-hat in jazz. I've done a few videos in the past about hi-hat independence and coordination, but today we're just going to talk about the mechanics of playing it, as well as a couple different sets of hi-hats. Uh, I featured the, both these pairs of hi-hats in a recent video where I talked about mixing and matching older cymbals for playing jazz. The first thing I want to talk to you about is actually the, the famous and uh, often misplayed hi-hat rhythm that you hear in jazz. When I was a kid, the movie, uh, if you went to the movies, it was a movie um, kind of thing that happened, like an intro, uh, which went ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. And uh, there was one with brushes, and then there was also one with hi-hat. There was two different ones. And I always loved the one, well, I loved both of them, but I loved the one with the hi-hat because I was a drummer back then. I was young. I was, you know, 11 years old or so, but I was trying to learn how to play jazz, and I would go home and <laughs> try to copy that. I forgot all about the movie, whatever that might, might have been, but uh, I would try to copy that hi-hat. And I don't know who was playing that. Maybe one of you know out there. It was probably a, a Hollywood guy. It could have been um, John Guerin or even Hal Blaine or, uh, you know, one of those guys, but... It always sounded great. So the trick to playing this is to have the two opens. Not this. That, you don't want to play that, okay? So it's open, close, open, open, close. And the second open, this one, is slightly more accented. If you wish, you don't have to do it like that. You can do it like this. But some folks did it where it almost sounded like ba, ba, almost like Elvin cymbal rhythm. Okay, so, so that's an important thing to remember, but not open, close, close, open. It's open, closed, open, open. So. Now, as you get faster, that kind of blends in together. The idea is to be able to play all that complicated coordination stuff under that. And it's really the same thing as doing it with your jazz ride pattern. The only difference is you're doing it on the hi-hat. You have to keep in mind of where that hi-hat is closing and opening. Joe Jones, Papa Joe Jones, was an amazing hi-hat player. Of course, with Basie, there was a lot of dry hi-hat. When you had Freddie Green strumming along there on every beat. The dry hi-hat sounds great. Another guy who played great hi-hat was Harold Jones, who I was lucky enough to play a few jazz festivals with back in the uh, 1990s. And an amazing hi-hat player. He, of course, also played with Basie in the later years. My favorite Basie drummer was Harold Jones. And uh, just incredible finesse on the hi-hat as far as big band playing. Um, so those are guys you want to check out. Also, some early Mel Lewis with the Terry Gibbs big band. That stuff is great. He plays some beautiful hi-hat, uh, as well as the Art Pepper Plus 11 record. Mel Lewis plays some beautiful hi-hat stuff on that. So those are some records that you can check out and, uh, and enjoy as far as the stuff that I'm showing you. Of course, you know, all the jazz drummers, Max Roach and um, Philly Joe, uh, ben Riley's another one, uh, Billy Higgins. All those guys were masters of the hi-hat because they had to play it. If you were playing a bass solo, if there was a bass solo going on, a lot of times for it to be quiet, they'd go to the hi-hat.
Now, one thing you can do if you're playing it soft and dry is you can take your left hand, put it under the hi-hat like this and play up. And in this case, I'm not even using my foot. I'm using my hand to close the hi-hat like this, and I'm using my stick underneath to add to the stick on the top. Now we can't forget Buddy Rich, who literally would start in the later years every single tune that the band played with the hi-hat. So in between tunes, uh, the band would stop and he would start the next tune and just go. <laughs> and I love that. Uh, so lots of times in the later years when I saw him in the 70s, he would do that. He didn't do it early on, but he would always be playing that hi-hat so there was no silence at all. And he could play it super fast. So if a tune was killing, you know, really fast, burning fast, that's how he would play it. There's a few tunes in the book that they do like that. So try to keep in mind all these different uh, artists and listen, and that's how you learn. They all play it a little bit differently. The last thing I want to do today is put a smaller pair of hi-hat cymbals up here and show you the difference. So these are uh, coveted K-15, so very, um, very popular cymbals in the day, if you could find them. They're dark, though, very dark sounding. These are going to be brighter. These are HH Sabians. Lots of companies make a version of this. Zildjian makes the, the Ks, okay, the newer Ks. Bosphorus has hi-hats, Meinl, lots and lots of versions. Peisty, traditionals sound good. I like these Sabians, the, especially the small size. So you'll hear the difference right away. So very tight, very controlled, as compared to the 15s, and especially the case which are mushy. But it is a sound. It's an older sound. This is a much more modern sound. So if you're playing, you know, any kind of groove like... Anything that calls for a tight thing with a backbeat or a funk thing, you don't want to use those 15s for that. They don't speak fast enough. Uh, but I'm a big fan of the smaller hi-hats. 13s, even 12s can sound good. So I hope that helps a little with your hi-hat questions. There's been a lot about the uh, jazz hi-hat especially. And just remember one more time, don't play it like this. Play it like this.